if they put a national sales tax, you know, we can set our own sales tax here, and maybe we might pay more here than they pay in other places, and I know we do, but that's a choice we make because of what we want for our families. National sales tax takes all of that choice. Once again, one more choice removed for myself and you all. Thank you, Ms. Simpson. Appreciate it. Sure. David, unless there's some more commentary. David, let's go to the next one. How many questions are there? There's some more. <laughs> okay, personal responsibility. Um, Mr. Mr. Cole, uh, what real problems does the new voter photo, the voter photo ID law enacted by the last legislature pose for the voters? And if something should get overturned by folks up in Washington, what do you think your legislator, legislation should uh, should embody to fix it? I'm totally over Washington. And uh, if they try to overturn our voter ID law, uh, you know, then I, again, nullification, we need to do what's right to ensure our elections, make sure that there's fairness and there's, there's not fraud, which we know is happening already here in Collin County in some uninhabited precincts that have a pretty high voter turnout. Uh, but, you know, frankly, uh, we need to make sure that our voter ID law has teeth. We need to fight it at the federal level. We need to fight it by court in the courts. And uh, make sure that uh, common sense legislation, like asking someone to produce some form of identification issued by the state to vote in our most sacred right, is enforced. Thank you, Mr. Cole. Anybody else? No? Yes? Mr. Burns? I can be real pithy. The real problem is it prevents fraud from the Democrats. So that's the problem. <laughs> but that's also the reason why we do that, because we're tired of being run over in simple things like voting. Just like John says, we, we need ideas to drive, to fly, to sign up for soccer, okay? Why not have an ID to vote? I think it's that important. Really? Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Burns. Are you going to have something more to say, Mr. Pitchford? I'm going to probably say, say something very quickly. I traveled down, time, David? I traveled down to Austin uh, 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 with a group, Tea Party group, to, to greet the arrival of Eric Holder. And, and one of the people that we went down there with was, was Bishop John Larson, very impressive uh, black minister. And his point was is that people have, have photo ID and cash their welfare checks, they have ID. We don't have millions of people running around without IDs. Anyone can go to the Department of Public Safety and they can get an ID. It's not that hard. Uh, David, the next one, maybe it'll come up the one I want. I'm going to hold off on that one for just a second. Um, you know, one of the things that occurred in the last session is that the legislators were asked to sign a pledge card to vote for the for the uh, Speaker of the House, uh, Mr. Strauss. It, starting with Mr. Burns, and I'd like you just to keep it to a few seconds, maybe a yes or a no. If you were presented with a pledge card to sign, would you sign it? I've got it. Okay. <laughs> I will not be signing any pledge cards for or against anybody, Joe Strauss, Sheriff, County Dog Catcher. I don't know Joe Strauss. I've met him once for like 15 seconds, and I'm not sure that that's enough to make a decision on whether I'm voting for or against somebody. Plus, I, I just don't feel it's wise to antagonize the Speaker of the House 11 months before an election, when there may not be a conservative alternative running against him, he probably won't even be opposed. So it just doesn't seem to make good sense to me to antagonize him before I even get there. And I think that working with whoever, whether it's the speaker or the chairman of a committee, is a better way to get our agenda passed than to more or less like I say, antagonize them. So my approach is to 
to civilly approach our agenda and try and get our agenda passed because that's, in my opinion, much more important than who is the Speaker of the House. Thank you, Mr. Burns. Mr. Cole? Would, you, would that be a yes? I will never else? sign a pledge card for Speaker. Mr. Leach? Uh, with all due respect, uh, Roger, I, I don't really care about antagonizing Joe Strauss. Uh, <laughs> My responsibility is to serve the citizens that elected me to office. I believe that I'm the most conservative candidate in this race, and you can count on me to vote for the most conservative for Speaker of the House. Ken Paxton would have had my vote, and if there's another conservative running against Joe Strauss for Speaker of the House, he'll have my vote as well. Thank you, Mr. Lee. The unions love the idea of card check. This is the idea where when they want to unionize a business, they come in and they can tell how the employees voted so that they can intimidate them. This business in Austin, the speaker, is nothing more than card check at the state level. If you do not sign this pledge card and he's reelected, then you will not get a committee assignment of your choice. You may not get a committee assignment at all. So I'm against card check for unions. I'm against card checks at, at the state level. I'm, and right now I'm here to tell you, Joe Strauss is the Democratic Speaker of the House. <laughs> I would have to say the only person that I would be comfortable voting for as Speaker of the House is one that has earned the vote for the people that I represent, and no other. And it, and it troubles me to think that someone has to ask this early on they have that much self-doubt, what's the purpose of asking this early on? That raises a red flag at the poll immediately, and I don't even know the guy. Okay, thank you. Um, we're going to take a few questions from the floor right now. And, uh, Nancy, uh, Fisher. Justin, no last name, uh, directed to Mr. Cole. Four years ago, four years ago, your biggest donors were Democrats and Democrat-led PACs. Since you were funded by Democrats in the past, can you talk about how we can trust uh, that you represent conservative values, Mr. Cole? I, I don't know what they're talking about. Four years ago, my biggest donors were not Democrats. Uh, you know, frankly, look at my financial statement uh, that came out uh, two days ago. You can see who my donors are. Uh, you know, frankly, uh, I haven't taken checks from any PACs. I haven't taken checks from any, uh, you name it. But uh, there might be candidates up here in the hat. You can check it out for yourself. Thank you. Good. 